major internal struggle that I had was all the work that I was putting in for Islam and all the things I was doing to be a good Muslim. I had no assurance that I was going to die and enter into Jannah at all. Um, I really didn't know what was going to happen to me when I when I died. Wow. So I mean, you can you can think about that. That would weigh heavily on your heart. You're doing all this stuff for God. You're doing all these rituals. You're doing all this work. You have no idea what's going to happen when you die. That. that and 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 but is that just is Sam? Just we have to be quicker because we have a, we have yeah, a lot yeah, more yeah, callers. Yeah. Uh, so, very brief answer. Yes. Is that just CL who doesn't know what's no. going to happen to him after death? Chapter or? 46, verse 9 of the Quran, and it's confirmed by the authentic hadith like Sahel Bukhari. Muhammad says that he's uh, no new thing among the messengers and that he does not know what Allah will do with him or, or with the people. Mm -hmm. 46, verse 9. So, so Muhammad quick, didn't know what Allah was going to do with him. And you know what's the proof of that? You want, you want today proof that Muhammad's destiny is uncertain? Every time a Muslim mentions his name, he says, may the prayers and peace of Allah be upon him. Now, Dave, for the life of me, if Muhammad is in a state of peace, why are you praying for Allah to grant him peace? Yeah, if Muhammad's up there and he's got like a trillion virgins, because keep in mind when you hear 70 or 72, that's the minimum if you make it. Yeah. That's the minimum. The, more, the better you are, the more you get. And if Muhammad is really as great as Muslims think, he should be up there in one massive eternal orgy, spending all of his, his existence deflowering virgins. Why are, you playing for, why are you praying for peace on him? Yeah, he already is in it, right? Are you sure it's not raisins though? I thought it was no, raisins. Yes. raisins. <laughs> <laughs> I like that video. So, uh, so yes, this is this is not just a, this wasn't just a problem for CL. This is a problem for Muslims in general. It's so bad. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr said, "This is Abu Bakr. Are you yeah. are you Muslims out there as great as Abu Bakr? Tell me right now. Think I yes or no." Abu Bakr said, "If he had one foot in paradise, he would still fear Allah's deception because according to Islam, God could he, God could trick you. You're about to step into heaven, and it's just a trick. Actually, I decided." You, I decided to send you to hell. And, ha! Real quickly, Dave, yeah. you know that's a sign of a true believer. You know why? When Abu Bakr said that, he was actually showing that he was a true believer. Because according to chapter 7, verse 99 of the Quran, it says this about the makr of Allah. The word makr means deception or conniving. It goes, are they then, speaking of disbelievers, secure from Allah's uh, deception or conniving? No one deems himself secure from Allah's conniving except those that perish. Meaning only those who are disbelievers think that they're safe from the makr of Allah. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you're a believer, you know that you're never safe from his makr or scheming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so hang on, all these Muslims out there who are confident, who are confident. They are not, then they're disbelievers. They're, wow. Chapter 7, verse 99 of the Quran. Ladies and gentlemen out there, you Muslims, welcome to the Sam Shamoon School of Quranic Instruction. You're learning <laughs> about your religion, things that you should be learning in the mosque, and your <laughs> leaders just never tell you because they know you'd leave Islam if you found these things in out. In Jesus' name, may you leave Islam and Amen. find Jesus. All right, next caller, who do we have? No, by the way, she had a question for Farhan, didn't she? Yeah. She, she wanted Farhan to make a... Or, no, no, it wasn't. Oh, she, she, she had a comment. She had a comment. She had a comment. Poor we'll, Farhan. We'll, Hang in there, Farhan. We'll get a question for you, we promise. <laughs> no, we're going to turn things over to Farhan in the end uh, to, to make yeah. any comments you might want to make. Who do we have next? Hello? Hi, my name is Sheikh Fure. I'm from West Africa. Um, later on, you find out uh, that... Uh, all the, and the angels pray for Muhammad. Isn't that strange? <laughs> uh, but that's later on in this video, and uh, I don't know exactly where. And uh, but I think it's near the end, so I'll make another video to point to that. Yeah, it's all and the angels pray for Muhammad. Why would does Allah have to pray for Muhammad? You know. Uh, who's Muhammad? Who's Allah praying to? Well, we'll find out in the next version of this.